Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Rum. I'm a former Marine cook. I've fed thousands and thousands and thousands of Marines. Today we're gonna to share with you how to do that. I got my buddy here, Jesse, from our local bar, Fibber McGee's, right down the street, and uh, we're gonna eat some food and drink some beers. And dessert. And dessert. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Cheers. Cheers to you. We want to give a big shout out to Aura California for hooking us up with this awesome knife, the Calafia. It's an um, amazing knife, aerospace steel. Look it up, Aura California. Made in Bellflower, California. Amazing knife. I mean, not every day you can just slice and dice like paper like that. Get your mushrooms. I mean, just beautiful and gorgeous. I mean, look at that. Beautiful. All right, everybody, here we go. This is our appetizer. Jesse, what, what are we doing today? Let's see, I'll cook out of here. We have a shrimp Caesar salad. Okay, well, just by chance, I got some I got some shrimp back here. That's perfect. So we're great. great. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we'll do this, uh, we'll make the uh, the dressing from scratch right here. So basically a mayonnaise base. So we got some egg, uh, lemon to cook the egg, lemon juice to cook the egg. We got some olive oil we're gonna put in there, some anchovies, garlic, salt. We'll mix this all up together and see what happens. I can't promise anything. We'll see what happens, you know? All we can do is do our best, right? You got it. That guy, we got this guy. Give these guys a little bit of a whisk first. Doesn't take too long to incorporate this guy just a little bit. Get her rolling a little bit, you know? Get her warmed up. Get that guy, and we can throw in just a little bit of fresh chopped garlic, just a little bit. A little bit of powdered garlic, go all the way through it. Get these anchovies going in there. A little bit of the, the Dijon. Let's see, can you make sure that's open for me, Jesse? Let's see. Pinch of salt in there. Chicken. <laughs> yeah, it would look a little silly trying to squeeze it through that. Just a shot in there. You know, you don't have to be exact. Just do a tiny little bit of this Parmesan Reggiano. Make a big mess. That's pretty much it right there, Jesse. Yep. You see all the ingredients. Pretty standard. We got this guy going. Give it a little tiny taste, just to make sure, you know, we're on the right track here. See what you think. Think about that. Very nice. You like that? Very nice. Okay, perfect, then we're good. Okay, we got our sauce done. I got our, our salad dressing done right there. Now we're just gonna go ahead and build these, uh, build these little romaine hearts up right here. So we got our plate right here. Just gonna go ahead and Put a couple of these right here. We got some shrimp. Just finished sauteing. Put a couple of these here. A couple of shrimp right there. And then we can go ahead and just maybe put just a couple of fresh mushroom right there. Just a couple of little, maybe a little fresh bell pepper. pepper. Bell pepper, is that? That's bell pepper right there. We'll just kind of throw this carrot on top. It's gonna to be a little, little overbuilt, but we'll make, we'll work with it. It's croutons. And we'll just do the smallest little drizzle of this guy. Chef, could I ask you one question? Yes, sir. Could you put a little more Parmesan cheese on the it's top? It's gonna come on top for you right there. You're right ahead of me right there. I got you, I read your mind. I was gonna do that. And there we go. Okay. What do you think about that? Very good. That looks pretty good to you? Yep. Yes, it All does. All right. We're gonna set that right there. Let's do another one for me for when I get a chance to take a break. No break for the chef. Right, right. <laughs> Just a couple more shrimp right here. I get three. 
Yes. Well, I you did, work did hard. The, well, I did the work. So You're working hard. All right. We'll do this again. A couple mushrooms. You know, everything goes real far. You know, you got all these different ingredients on here, which is nice. Build it up. Get your greens in, you know. You got to get those vegetables in one way or another. Put it on a salad with some shrimp. Works pretty good. A couple more croutons right there. A little bit more dressing. Just make a mess here. I don't you know, know. You I don't know if you like the cheese or you have enough. It's up to you. Hey, you know, you can never have enough cheese. There you go. I mean, come on, you know? Yeah, ooh. Like, let's just get it all cheese on everything. <laughs> Double cheese on everything. That's what I always say. All right, there we go. There's some both nice little appetizers for us. Dig into and uh, see where see where it goes. All right. Do you want to give it a try? I'll give it a you try. Just we don't even use we don't use even utensils around here for this. So no. Just go ahead and just pick that guy it. up and just try to take a big bite of that one way or another. Get it in there. Try to get a shrimp in that bite. Mmm. What do you think? Wait, wait. Oh, you know we forgot. Oh, we forgot something here. We gotta get this guy on top. Okay. We forgot all about. Him. So That's good. Finish the touch. All right, there we go. Appetizer done. That shrimp, everything. Everything, one bite. How about that? Mm -hmm. okay. Very nice. Nice. And uh, so let's see. So we've got an entree coming up. What are we looking at? The entree will be. Wait a minute. Beef stroganoff. Beef stroganoff. Wow, that's my favorite dish. Did you know that? I love that dish. Looking nice. Okay, so let's go. Uh, let's clean this guy up, and then we'll get started on our beef stroganoff. All right, well, here we go. Um, we're gonna be making some beef stroganoff from scratch. It's a quick way to uh, feed for a lot of people. All the troops are home. You got a big family. You want to do it on a budget. You want to make bulk. You know, you got a lot of kids. You got a lot of great, you got grandkids. Right. You five kids, right, Jesse? Five kids. You have everybody over. This is a great meal you can make. Fill the kids up. All the pasta and then the beef together. It's a great dish. Sounds good. Works really good. So let's get started right here. And uh, did you ever have mess duty when you were in the military? Oh yeah, everybody pulls mess duty. In, right? bo in boot camp, that's, okay. that's the hardest. Because the DIs are on your back all the time. Right. And so it was almost a break, right? Getting yeah. to go into the kitchen? Kitchen, went, but you did the dishes and helped the cook out and ride the range. Now riding the range was the stove. It was big stainless steel and you get a brick with aluminum on it. You put a little sand on the grill, very little and you scrub it back and forth, back and forth, and then you clean it up with a hot rag, clean rag, everything clean, clean rag, and he's ready to go. And he'll put a little, very little oil on it. Yeah. And he's ready to cook, he put the low heat, and then troops are ready to come in. That's the griddle, right? Of course. And, and right, and then Sunday was the best day when oh. you were out of boot camp. You got out of boot camp into the- into, into you did your infantry training, and then you, you had your day off Sunday. You go to church or whatever you want to do, and then you went over and, they had two garbage cans at the end and the chef was there. Had his tattoo on and <laughs> in those days they had, he cook have a cigarette with a long ash on the end. <laughs> yeah. And then he cook you any way you want, your steak or eggs. It was steak and eggs. Steak and eggs Sunday. Like your last meal. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, you gotta, you know, you gotta keep them. And home fries too, of course. You know, it's always said, you know, there's a lot of things that Marines like to do besides fight. Mm -hmm. Eating is probably one of them, right. I think. I mean, I can only imagine. So what it, else? Everything went well, and you know you had your day off for the day, and then you wish you didn't eat them too much. We're gonna keep this real simple. So it's just a little bit of a little bit of, of garlic powder, a um, little bit of salt, and some fresh cracked pepper on here. Boom. Just you know, we we'll just do it simple. You know. Yep. We don't need to get too fancy. And then we got our pan over here. We're gonna go ahead and just dump all this nice beef right in this pan. Oh, I hear it sizzling. I mean, this is so easy, Jesse. You know that I could do it. I mean, I don't know your, your your skill level, but you know it's not it's not too difficult. Slice up some meat, throw it in a hot pan, and then we're gonna get our veggies in there. We're gonna keep it super super simple again. Most time, roast beef stroganoff is just mushrooms, onions, salt, pepper. That's it. That's all you're gonna put in there for for the most part. Yeah, and then the best time was uh, when I was stationed, I got a duty stay, and went over to Morocco. You spent time in Morocco? Morocco, yes. And uh, we were with the Seabees. I'm hooked up with the Seabees, and we had a great time, played our softball and basketball uh -huh. against them, and they were nice guys, the Seabees. And then... Those Seabees are Navy, of course. Right. 
the, the construction of the Navy, right? The construction, the construction guys? workers. Yeah, the construction workers of the Navy. Right. Yeah. And then uh, worked the deal. We had the French Marines there. They were in a little war time with Algeria. The French Marines. French Marines, and they were wounded. And I, huh. would, I didn't smoke, so I'd bring up cartons of cigarettes to them. Cartons they, of cigarettes for the French. To the French Marines. Yes. They would pass off a couple of bottles of wine to me. Oh, wine for cigarettes. And then they were wounded fellas too. Right. So I was surprised they, so they went real nice. Yeah, they, I, the language, but we got along. Right, right, right. And then uh, he gave us the, uh, the wine. I brought it back to the Seabees and they cooked us meals on mes mesquite, mesquite wood. Right, right. No, that was the best. And then uh, they cooked for us and then everything was great. How about 3.2 beer? Wash it down. <laughs> How was the beer? Was it warm? Believe it or not, I was 17 year old when I oh, wow. came into the Marines. We what year was that? We went into Rabat. This is 1956. We went to Rabat, the capital, and we're looking for the girls and food and stuff. <laughs> right. And we went into the bar. Believe it or not, it was called Coney Island Joe's. Oh, wow. And it was Just serving. You know what they were serving? Hot dogs. Budweiser. <laughs> if you look on a bottle, it was a thing they're made in Africa. Oh, Luke wow. on the label. That's great. I thought I'd meet Humphrey Bogart there. You met Humphrey Bogart? <laughs> no, I thought I was. Oh, were. you thought you were. Yeah. Wow. Casablanca. Right, right. So we're going uh, to try to get a good sear on this. Sometimes it's a little, you know, you got the juices running here. So you kind of want to get those guys out if it gets too, uh, if it gets a little too watery because you can't get that brownness on the steak. Okay, so like I was saying, Jesse, what we're gonna do is we gotta drain some of the juice out because it's gonna just boil in there. We don't want boiled meat, we want seared meat. Seared. So we're gonna pull all the juice out, which we're gonna use. So we save that juice. Of course, that's our that's basically beef stock or beef base, if you will. We get it out real good, so we have a, a Okay. Get that water out. <laughs> that water, like I said, is gonna we want it to take with this the thing. strainer. With the strainer? Yeah, just because I'm gonna take the meat and put it back okay, in there. Yeah. Right? So we're gonna crank this guy way up on high. We'll get a nice little browning on this guy. And then we're gonna put that juice back in there to make our gravy. Right on top of the meat or take the meat out? What we're gonna do is we're gonna cook this meat for just a couple more seconds right now. Right. Get a nice, like I said, we want a nice texture on that. You know, a lot of food, you gotta have that texture. You want it real crispy on the outside, juicy on the oh, middle. Oh, yes. High heat, I like to cook on high heat, real high heat. And um, you gotta cook real hot and fast and then like leave it alone, let it simmer. So you get the textures of the outside crispiness and the inside juiciness. I mean, that's what you want. If it's boiled meat, it just kind of turns to mush sometimes. So you want to have that texture, if you will. All right. And um, pick it up pull. a little. I'll pick it up a little tip here. Yeah, yeah. So we got to keep it really, really high heat to get it seared. So yeah. tell me, so you were in Morocco, right? And then uh, how long was your tour? Uh, Ten months. What years was that? 50, 1956. Nice, nice. So where did you finish your tour out at? Well, then I came back. We went to uh, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. And we then we did a little tour over in uh, Viegas Island, just off Puerto Rico, with uh -huh. infantry training. Just some training right there? Yeah, uh, we did landing, coming over the ships like they did in World War II. Uh -huh. And uh, guys got seasick in the nice Caribbean weather. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I, oh my God, I can't even imagine that. That sounds horrible. And then we hit land and uh, it was like 95 degrees and we're all full combat gear. Oh my God. And uh, we ended up just going along and we used to get the sugar cane. Sugar cane. And, and 150 proof rum. 150 proof rum. But we were off duty then. Oh, wink, of course, yeah. Wink, yeah. wink. <laughs> And then right. after that, uh, we did that tour. I came back, came back home. Yeah, North Carolina, and then uh, did my duty there, and uh, I got out. Two, nice. I did a two-year tour. Two-year tour. They had a deal then. 50, I was 17. I got out. In my 19. Right, right. Okay, so I'm gonna take this beef, beef off. Okay, there you go. Put it to the side. It's cooked. It's it's, it's cooked all the way through. We didn't get to sear it as much, but we don't have all day here. So I'm gonna put a little more olive oil back in here. Okay. Okay, the pan's red hot. It's pretty hot. Okay, so we're gonna let that guy just get that oil get a little hot. All right. As soon as it's hot, we'll throw our uh, mushrooms and onion in there. Looking good. It's a handful of each of these guys, you know. Oh, I like the onion. All right, you like the onion? We'll go next year. That Louisiana cooks in onion. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, get this guy going real good. 
That's still on high heat. Yeah, high, we want it high. Well, a lot of oil, a lot of oil, a lot of fire. And once again, all we really need is uh, garlic powder and salt and pepper. No garlic? Gar yeah, we'll do the garlic last because you oh. want to put the garlic in too soon. Garlic burns. It burns up. It burns, it gets bitter. Oh, so wow. you just You want to throw it in at the very end. Okay, that's, that's a good tip. Yeah, it's real sensitive to uh, that high heat. So we'll let that cook down for two seconds. We got our flour, we got our beef base, and we got our cream. We're basically just making a gravy, a mushroom onion gravy. Mushroom onion and gravy. Simple, like I said. We're gonna do a little bit of a roux. Once this guy kind of caramelizes and, and caramelizes and comes together, these guys right here, kind of transparent on the on the on the onion. We we'll throw a little bit of flour in there, just kind of like. Make it kind of a paste. It's gonna come real like a pasty kind of. We're gonna cook it a little bit, get it brown. All right. Nice and nice and brown, and then we'll thin it out with the cream and the beef and the beef okay. broth. That's what I was gonna ask you. How do you get that thickness out? Oh, that's that's hot. Yep. It's getting you hot. The, you got the touch there with the flip. Got to make a mess. <laughs> have to make a mess. It's part of it. Okay. So we're gonna speed it up a little bit. We're not take. We don't have all day. So, I mean, you know. This, the best thing about this thing too is it's super like forgiving. You know, you don't caramelize it enough, who cares? How much powder you put in it? I mean, it's a little, you know, you kind of just work it in there flour. too. The flour, you just kind of work it in so you kind of get, you'll just kind of feel it. You'll kind of feel it kind of come together, a little pasty, you know? If you put too much flour, you could put a little more oil in there, you know? Look yeah. at that, you know, you want to just kind of, it'll start coming together, you'll kind of see it. It'll get stuck to the pan, you know? The more you do this, the more you kind of get used to it as far as the way you want the consistency there's no i mean you can measure it if you want it's supposed to be i think equal parts oil to uh oil to flour equal parts but you go but you go by eye you go by you know i mean if you if, if, if you want i mean you know well, with experience it always comes out better that way you know you measure everything and it usually ends up coming out bad when you just try to throw it together all of a sudden like wow how did i do that and then you can never do it again you know, yeah. but that time it was it was unique and the best you ever had. So it's like, well, okay, whatever. But so we're gonna let this guy kind of brown out. You can kind of see it just all kind of yep, pasting I out. See it. Go ahead, thin what it is out. That this stock. is just beef. It's just a beef base. Beef, beef stock. It's beef stock, yeah. And we're gonna just kind of get it to the consistency that we want. This is our gravy right here. Okay. See that guy's kind of coming together. I see it going. You okay. Oh, garlic here. Did you not? Oh, you know what? It did not do the garlic. Yet, but we're fine. We'll just do a little bit of powder in here. There you go. We're good. Beautiful. Bam. A little bit about, yeah, a little garlic at the end right there. Okay, a little more salt, a little more pepper. Make it off heat. You don't want to burn it. A little bit more beef base. Just thin it out the way you want it. Yeah, that's nice. Got yeah, it's consistency. Yeah. You see that guy's kind of coming together right there. And at the end, we'll put the cream in at the very end. 15, 20 minutes, you can have a pan gravy that is from scratch, that you're not cracking a can open with all those preservatives. Once again, we like to cook from scratch here. I mean, it's really good for you to cook from scratch. Yeah. There's no kind of preservatives, added preservatives. I'm gonna put a little cream here just to kind of finish her out. Gonna plate this guy off. I hope you're hungry. I'm very hungry. Okay, good. So we've been hanging. You've been hanging around for a while here. Yes. So okay. But I right. le learned a lot. Okay, you did. Right. So this is where we're at. We got little noodles here. To start this guy out. Pour a little bit of our noodle right there in the base right there. Some people like to just kind of mash all, like put it all, put one big bowl and mix. I hate that. No, you want to dress, that, dress you know, it up. We'll, we'll, we'll put it in there separately so you kind of gauge out what you're getting. You know, the kids get more noodles, right? Right. Less steak. <laughs> steak is for us. We we'll let the kids eat a bunch of noodles. So. We put our steak right on top right there. Here it comes. This is this, it. And this is it right here. Well, this is the... Are you kidding me? Look at that. Oh, come on. Yeah. Come on. You know what I mean? I got it. After all day in the field right there, you come in yeah. for this gravy right here. Are you kidding me? Ooh. You can never have too much gravy. That's what, right. you know, that's what the, it's nice. a saying, right? Right. It's a saying. It's no. gravy. It's gravy. Right. It means it's good, right? I mean, 
Is that good right there? That's good. Okay. Lip smacking good. All right. How about that right there? Wow. Very good. You got a fork right there. I'm gonna get a little bit for myself too. But dig in, don't wait for me. Okay, can Please. I throw a little pepper on there? Absolutely. I'll get it. Are you kidding me? There, you, It's right there. I'm, 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 I think we might put some Parmesan on top of that. Is that getting too crazy? Uh, whatever you want. <laughs> there you go. There we Try go. Try it like this first, then maybe we can always add a little bit. Oh, this looks good. I'll let you pick the appetizer and the entree. I'll pick in the dessert. I got something there for you. I think you're gonna like. Oh. On a cold day, yeah, this would hit the spot. Well, the good thing about this is that after you do plate it off like this, you know, if you're at home, you can put all this in one container mm -hmm. and freeze it. Yeah. You know, have it for a week in there. You know, you can just thaw it out and have it. You can have this, you know, at the end of the week. The sauce makes this. I mean, the sauce is everything. You know, and you can use cheap cuts for this too. You can use just like... You find sirloin on, sirloin on sale. You can find a tri-tip on sale. You can find a sirloin roast you on don't sale. Want, don't want the meat tough. You don't want it tough. No, that's why you cut it nice and you cut it nice and thin strips. Saute it really nice. Mm -hmm. You'll be good. Uh -huh. Take a little sip. You know, wash it down. Fresh beer too. To the chef. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse, for coming out. We gotta get that dessert out. Chef of the future. Okay, so I'm gonna get this guy out of the way. We'll get dessert cracking out here. Okay. So, you know, as you remember, in the mess hall, the chow hall, we like to call right. it, you'd always have uh, an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert. And a lot of times we like to cook in sheet pans, bake off a lot of, you know, bake off your desserts in big sheet pans so everybody can have a little, little portion and you can stretch it out real nice. Some fresh apples, fresh cranberry. This is a cran apple crumb. Well, it looks, Pretty simple. Looks nice. Fresh cranberries. Uh, we got the cranberries. We cooked it in some butter and some, uh, just basically just cooked the cranberries in butter. Then we uh, added the apples with some uh, more butter and brown sugar. Cooked those guys in, in, in a pan for about 15 minutes till they're kind of a little cooked through. Put them in a sheet pan. This crumb is made out of oatmeal, toasted oatmeal, um, graham cracker, Brown sugar and butter. And butter. Simple, simple, that's it. Toasted the the, um, the oatmeal for a little while in some butter, and then incorporated the brown sugar and the uh, graham cracker, and then spread it on top, and uh, that's it. So we'll get a little slice of this after we get that. To, Very nice. We'll take that down and um, see what you think. Close. Make a little bit of a mess, but that's okay. How about that? Ooh. Super basic, super fresh. Thank you everybody for joining us here at the Chow Hall today. Thank you, Jesse. Honor having you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your service. I, it means the world. Thank you again. I learned a lot. Um, finishing off with our cran apple crumb here today. Beautiful. No better way to finish anything off with Good old whipped cream. Whipped cream on top. Oh boy. You know, you just gotta tell don't me. Don't be to stop. stingy. Just tell me when to stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wanna be a hog. Right? Alright. Here we go. What do you think? Just tell me what you think. I mean, you know. Apple cranberry. Ooh. And whipped cream. It's warm and then the whipped cream hits it. I mean, forget yeah, about it. Right? Forget about it. Nice. Beautiful. You can find us at uh, at the Chow Hall, and uh, we'll see you next time.